One, the clinical hook, anatomy of a failed run. I want you to vividly remember the last time you tried to go for a run. Whether you are a complete beginner lacing up for the first time, or a former runner trying to make a comeback after a long hiatus. You step out the door, you feel motivated, you feel determined. Your mind replays memories of when you could run 10 kilometers effortlessly. You tell yourself, it's just running, how hard can it be? So you start. Minute one feels fantastic. The wind is in your face, you feel free. Minute three, you notice your breathing getting heavier, but you push through. By minute five, everything changes. There is a tightness in your chest, your throat burns. You feel like you cannot suck in enough oxygen, no matter how deep you breathe. In medicine, we call this specific sensation air hunger. Panic sets in. Your legs turn to lead. You are forced to stop, hands on your knees, gasping for life, defeated. In that moment of vulnerability, your inner critic screams, look at you, you failed. You are weak. You are too old for this. Running is not for you anymore. Stop right there. I am here to tell you as a scientist that your inner critic is wrong. You are not weak. Your lungs are not broken. And you didn't fail. You simply triggered a specific biological alarm system inside your brainstem that you don't understand yet. Today, I am going to teach you the walk-run method. But forget what you know about Couch to 5K apps. We are going deeper. We are going to talk about neuroscience, CO2 tolerance, tendon elasticity, and metabolic clearance. I will show you how to hack your nervous system so you can run for 30 minutes today without pain, without gasping, and without injury. 2. The Returner's Paradox The Structural Lag This chapter is specifically for those of you returning to running. You face a hidden, invisible enemy that beginners don't have. It's called the ghost of fitness past. Your brain remembers how to run fast. Your ego wants to run fast. And surprisingly, your heart remembers too. The cardiovascular system is highly plastic. It adapts very quickly. Within 10 to 14 days of training, your blood volume increases and your heart becomes more efficient. So your engine says, let's go, we can do 5K. But here lies the trap. While your engine, heart, lungs is ready, your chassis, tendons, ligaments, joints, is not. This is what we call structural lag. Let's look at the anatomy. Muscles are red tissue, they are vascular. They have a massive blood supply, which means they recover and adapt in days. Tendons are white tissue. They are a vascular. They have very poor blood supply. They feed primarily through mechanical loading. Because of this poor blood supply, connective tissue takes three to four months to adapt to the impact forces of running. There is a massive gap between your heart's timeline, two weeks, and your tendon's timeline, three months. If you run continuously just because your heart feels good, you are writing a check that your tendons cannot cash. The result? Shin splints, Achilles tendonitis, runner's knee. The walk-run method is the only scientific way to throttle the engine so the chassis can catch up. It is your safety valve. 3. Science 1. The suffocation alarm, chemoreceptors, and CO2. Now let's address that panic feeling, the air hunger. Why do you gasp for air? Most people think, I am out of shape. I need more oxygen. False. You are not gasping because you lack oxygen. Your blood is likely 98% saturated with oxygen. You are gasping because you have too much carbon dioxide, CO2. Here is the neuroscience. Your brainstem has sensors called chemoreceptors. These sensors do not care much about oxygen. They are obsessed with CO2 levels and pH balance. When you run continuously as a beginner, your muscles produce CO2 as a byproduct of metabolism. Because your aerobic system isn't efficient yet, this CO2 builds up in your bloodstream faster than you can exhale it. When CO2 hits a critical threshold, the chemoreceptors send a red alert signal to the amygdala, the brain's fear center. Your brain thinks you are suffocating. It triggers a panic response. It forces you to hyperventilate. 
It floods your system with stress hormones such as screams, stop running or we die. That is why you stop. Not because your muscles failed, but because your brain's alarm system shut you down. The walk-run solution. When you insert a one-minute walk interval, you lower the metabolic output just enough. You allow your lungs to offload that excess CO2. You turn off the alarm before it starts ringing. By keeping the chemoreceptors calm, you keep the brain calm. And a calm brain allows the body to perform for 30, 40, or even 60 minutes. 4. Science 2. The Vacuum Cleaner. Lactate and the Bohr Effect. Let's move from the brain to the muscles. What is happening in your legs? When you run above your threshold, you produce lactate and hydrogen ions. These ions make the muscle environment acidic. Acidic muscles lose the ability to contract efficiently. This is that heavy legs feeling. Here is the magic of the walking interval. Many people think walking is rest. It is not rest. It is active clearance. When you walk, your heart is still pumping blood at a decent rate, maybe 110 to 120 beats per minute. But because the demand is low, your muscles switch modes. They stop producing massive amounts of waste and start consuming it. The oxygen you breathe during the walk helps oxidize the lactate. Think of the walking break as a vacuum cleaner. You run for two minutes, creating a bit of mess. Then you walk for one minute, vacuuming up the mess. When you start the next run interval, your muscles are chemically clean. Furthermore, this helps with the bore effect. By clearing the acidity, you actually help your red blood cells release oxygen more efficiently into the muscle tissue. You are literally biohacking your own bloodstream to deliver more fuel. 5. Science 3. The Dopamine Hack, Rewiring Your Brain. This is perhaps the most important part for your long-term success. Why do 80% of new runners quit within the first month? Because for them, running equals punishment. If every run ends with you gasping for air, in pain and feeling like a failure, your brain releases cortisol and dynorphin. These are neurochemicals associated with stress and aversion. Your brain learns a simple pattern. Running equals pain. Avoid it. Next time you try to go for a run, your brain will sabotage you. You will feel tired, unmotivated, or too busy. The dopamine hack. The walk-run method ensures you never hit that panic point. You finish the 30 minutes feeling surprisingly fresh. You feel successful. This releases dopamine, the reward molecule. Your brain learns a new pattern. Running equals success. Do it again. We are not just training your muscles, we are rewiring your neural pathways to create an addiction to running rather than a phobia of it. 6. The Protocol The 2 1 Rule Precision Execution Enough theory, let's get to the execution. How do you do this properly? The gold standard protocol for starting is the 2 to 1 ratio. Total duration 30 minutes. The warm up. Do not skip this. Walk briskly for 5 minutes to lubricate the joints. The set. Run for 2 minutes. Active reset for 1 minute. The volume. Repeat this cycle 7 to 8 times. Critical warning. 1. The speed limit. The nasal test. Here is where everyone fails. They treat the 2 minute run as a sprint. If you sprint, you spike CO2 instantly and the method fails. How do you know the right pace? We use the nasal breathing test. During the two minutes of running, keep your mouth closed. Breathe only through your nose. If you feel the desperate need to open your mouth to gasp for air, you are running too fast. Slow down, shuffle if you have to. If you can breathe through your nose, you are in the correct metabolic zone, zone two. You are safe. Critical warning two. The active reset posture. During the one minute walk, do not stroll lazily. Do not look at your phone. We call this an active reset. If you slump or stop, blood pools in your legs and you get dizzy. Stand tall. Imagine a string pulling your head to the sky. 
Open chest. Allow the diaphragm to expand. Power walk. Swing your arms. Keep the mechanical rhythm going. Don't turn the engine off, just let it idle at high RPM. 7. Troubleshooting. What if 2 slash 1 is too hard? Now let's troubleshoot, because we are all different. What if you try the 2 to 1 ratio, but even with nasal breathing, you are struggling? What if your heart rate doesn't come down during the walk? Regress immediately. There is no shame in regression. There is only shame in quitting. Change the ratio to 1 to 1. Run 1 minute. Walk 1 minute. This gives you a 1 to 1 work to rest ratio. It is foolproof. Do this for 2 weeks until it feels easy, then graduate to 2 to 1. On the flip side, if 2 slash 1 feels too easy, do not increase the speed. Increase the duration of the run interval. Go to 3 slash 1 or 4 slash 1, but keep the 1 minute walk. Your tendons still need that break even if your heart doesn't. 8. The Elite Secret – Social Proof And if your ego is still whispering, But Dimitri, real runners don't walk. I look silly walking every two minutes. Let me share a secret. Jeff Galloway, a US Olympian, pioneered this method. I personally coach athletes aiming for sub-three-hour marathons who use walking breaks in their long runs. Why? Because it delays muscle fiber fatigue. It allows them to consume hydration and gels without choking. It keeps their core temperature down. If an Olympian is not too proud to walk to maximize performance, why are you? Walking is a strategic weapon. Continuous running, when you aren't ready, is just ego. 9. The Trap When to Stop Walking The Coaching Gap Now, the final and most critical question. Coach, will I have to walk forever? No, absolutely not. The walk-run method is the scaffolding. Once the building is solid, the scaffolding comes down. But this is where 90% of runners fail. You get impatient. You do the walk-run for three weeks. You feel great. Your structural lag hasn't caught up yet, but you feel invincible. So you jump straight into continuous 30-minute runs. And boom. Two weeks later, you are in the physiotherapist's office with shin splints or plantar fasciitis. Back to zero. The million dollar question. When exactly do we switch from February 1st to March 1st? When do we drop the walk entirely? And is it week four, week eight? The answer is, it depends on your biology, not a generic PDF calendar. It depends on your cardiac drift. It depends on your heart rate recovery speed. It depends on your age and injury history. 10. Closing. Stop guessing, start building. Running is not just putting one foot in front of the other. It is neurobiology. It is physiology. It is biomechanics. The 2 slash 1 protocol is the perfect start. It gets you off the couch and into the game safely. But if you want to navigate the dangerous transition from walk run to continuous runner, if you want a plan that monitors your structural adaptation, so you never have to stop running due to injury again, then you need a scientist in your corner, not just motivation. In the pinned comment below, you will find my contact details. Send me a message. Let's build a strategy that respects your biology and unlocks your potential. Respect your brain, respect your body. Train smart. Your running journey powered by science.